Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to Business Forum London. Uh, so I'm delighted to be back here at uh, Tobacco Doc, uh, and I can tell you we are all set for another great edition of uh, this event. Uh, so we have this year an excellent lineup of speakers, uh, and we have actually more registrations than ever before, an impressive 1,300 of you. Uh, many of you are already here, so thanks for, to all of you for being here this morning. We have, uh, indeed, uh, a full day of sessions uh, ahead of us, uh, structure around the key themes of payments, securities, technology, cyber, and compliance. Uh, and this obviously uh, builds on uh, the conversations that were, st that were kicked off already last year uh, here, as well as at Cybos. And yes, we'll end up the day with a closing uh, panel, a panel discussion, uh, moderated by uh, Kirsty Walk from uh, BBC's Newsnight on the brave new world that uh, follows Brexit. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Uh, it's obviously there's huge international debate around the Britain's changing role. But frankly, uh, me being from Barcelona, having grown up in Catalonia, I'm definitely not one to talk about political uncertainty. <laughs> so anyway, back to our conference, and uh, we'll, uh, we're going to kick it off shortly with the opening panel. Uh, but before that, uh, just allow me to uh, spend a few minutes uh, elaborating of a couple of the major themes that are going to be framed in the discussion today. The first one is a very broad one, uh, and it is, of course, innovation. Uh, and we all know the context, right? Uh, there is talk about the fourth industrial revolution, which is an industrial interplay of technology, not just mobile and cloud, but also sensors, robotics, big data, DLT, AI, machine learning, just to name a few. Uh, and this is already having an impact in the financial industry because customer expectations are evolving. Uh, businesses expect from financial services the same kind of uh, experience, uh, choice, and service integrations that they get in the daily lives from uh, the so-called GAFAs, uh, the Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. Uh, and in fact, uh, some of these tech giants uh, are increasingly being present in the payment space too. Uh, with uh, Take Asia, for example, with Alipay and Tencent that are scaling really fast. Uh, so we could say that uh, if you look at uh, one common characteristic of all of these companies is that they are essentially two-sided platforms, connecting, very simply, users on the one side and providers on the other. And uh, there is a, a very simple example that I like to use with the team internally. Uh, and it is about another Swift. It is Taylor Swift. <laughs> so, by the way, inspired uh, by my 10-year-old <laughs> daughter, who clearly is much more interested in Taylor Swift than her dad's job, uh, which I don't blame her for that. Uh, but uh, anyway, obviously, Taylor has nothing to do with finance. But uh, Instagram is a good parallel, as the same model applies. Uh, uh, by being on Instagram, Taylor Swift attracts in excess of uh, 100 million followers, uh, but Instagram needs to remain relevant for her, or else she'll move to a different social platform, and her followers may move away as well. And when we think about our own business at Swift, there are similarities with this uh, platform model, uh, because our network attracts thousands of smaller players, as it is a great way to uh, connect to the biggest global financial institutions. Uh, but at the same time, our job is to constantly stay relevant to both of these segments. Essentially, is to be the place to be, to remain the place to be for, uh, for both of these segments. Uh, and that battle, because let's face it, it is a battle, can only be won through innovation. So you'll be hearing much more about how we're going about it uh, during the, the day today, as well as uh, hearing what's happening in the wider ecosystem from uh, both fintechs and big uh, tech, play, uh, tech uh, giants. So, and one thing is clear is that all of this uh, front-end innovation is in essence transforming uh, our traditional transaction banking model. Uh, we have a series of new entrants, uh, niche players, that are, by the way, powered by pro-competition regulation, such as uh, PSD2 in Europe, and leveraging APIs on the back of open banking. And essentially, these, these uh, new entrants are kind of salami slicing the, the payments value chain. And it creates, obviously, a whole set of new competitors, as well as potential new partners. And that's why we're seeing increasingly more collaboration between banks and fintechs 
as this matures. But behind all of this very visible, it's clear, front-end innovation, there is an area that is less visible, but I would say as critical, and that's infrastructure. And I'd like to use an analogy here with a rock concert. Uh, because uh, as bands go on tour, um, the, uh, the lighting and graphics get more and more spectacular uh, to uh, impress the audience and create excitement. But behind the scenes, uh, you get something different. You get this. So you, you see what I'm getting at, right? Uh, so back to our industry, uh, and obviously, if there is one thing that all of this front-end innovation requires, is uh, an underlying, robust, and resilient interbank infrastructure as a foundation. So the message is, uh, we need to handle the backstage complexity in a reliable way, but I would even add, in a responsible way as well. So take cross-border payments, for instance. We need responsible innovation that builds on existing foundations and introduces new technologies when they are mature, when they are scalable, and when they bring uh, distinctive business value. And through GPI, uh, that's what we're essentially doing at Swift. We are evolving uh, the existing correspondent banking rails to support same-day funds and end-to-end -end traceability and transparency of fees, allowing banks to dramatically improve the cross-border payments experience by providing richer information through APIs to their end corporate clients who in turn, they can, they can manage, obviously, payments much more effectively. So the service is enjoying very strong momentum. Uh, it's being used by more than 160 institutions, exchanging on a daily basis in excess of 100 billion US dollars worth in value, and that through some 350 country corridors. And now that GPI is up and running, we are realizing that the speed is genuinely impressive. So as said, uh, the standard is same-day funds, uh, but in practice, half of all GPI payments take uh, from or initiation to credit the beneficiary less than 30 minutes, and many of them actually seconds. So we can definitely say that on cross-border payments, the backstage is definitely improving. But there is another area in where well, there is a huge amount of infrastructure change, of course, and that's obviously domestic payments. Uh, and perhaps nowhere more than here uh, in the UK, uh, where we have first, of course, uh, the Bank of England's uh, RTGS renewal project, and Andrew Hauser may tell us more uh, uh, this morning during the opening panel. And there is, of course, as well, the uh, roadmap um, to the delivery of uh, the, a new payments architecture uh, that came out of the, the work of the Payment Strategy Forum. The legal governance uh, and uh, the legal uh, framework and the governance are already in place for uh, NPSO, the new payment system operator, uh, and they will now be uh, working uh, shortly on the FPS renewal as well as leading on open banking. So we'll be having sessions on the UK payments landscape and on open banking. Uh, so I'll definitely be looking forward to hearing from the many speakers on these topics, including Paul Horlock uh, from MPSO and Bob Weekly from uh, UK Finance. So while we can say as well that well, the UK has been an early adopter in faster payments, uh, this is now clearly part of a much broader global shift. Uh, we, and SWIFT, by the way, we're working very closely with the industry uh, to deploy uh, where applicable, low latency, high throughput, 24-7 network solutions to support uh, instant payment initiatives, such as uh, in Europe, uh, TIPS and uh, RT1, and in Australia, the UNPP project that is uh, now live. So, lots of opportunity in the front end, the back end, across cross-border and domestic payments, and in securities as well, by the way. Uh, we're going to have a couple of great um, capital market sessions, looking at how innovation can transform the client investment experience, and as well how capital markets uh, 
really make real-time payments a reality. So a lot of uh, innovation happening, uh, but actually we can also say that the digital age is probably more than ever the age of risk management, which is the second theme of the day. Uh, and there are many challenges that need to be overcome, such as, for example, data protection. I mean, uh, this guy is clearly the face of the crisis, uh, as safeguarding data is obviously paramount. But we also have geopolitics, uh, particularly now with uh, Cold War uh, uh, tensions being back on the headlines. And there are also the emergence of, of uh, uh, some uh, new interesting social phenomena, such as, uh, yes, fake news. Uh, but if you think about it, uh, it's not as new as we think it is. Um, you could even say that what goes around comes around. Because back in the 60s, um, amazingly, uh, Paul McCartney ha had to uh, do a BBC interview to prove that he was still alive. After a US university newspaper uh, had reported that uh, he had passed away and been replaced by a lookalike. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm glad to say that uh, Paul is still going strong uh, some 50 years later. Uh, but what this tells you is that these challenges are not as new after all. And there is obviously one major challenge that the industry is facing right now, and that is, of course, cyber. But again, it's not a new concept. Uh, bank robberies have been there actually for a couple of centuries already. They're just getting a little bit more sophisticated than that. Uh, so obviously, as banks keep rolling out new digital services, we all know there is a growing number of entry points through which cyber criminals can access systems and customer data. So cyber definitely keeps the industry's feet firmly on the ground. And as far as SWIFT and uh, the glo our global community is concerned, obviously we are now two years on since the introduction of the customer security program. And uh, uh, clearly we're seeing genuine uh, progress, uh, as well as, by the way, evidence that some of the attacks have been stopped in their tracks. So by the end of last year, 89% of our 11,000 users have attested their level of compliance with the set of uh, mandatory controls that we introduced in the program. Uh, that represents, by the way, 99% of the total volumes. Uh, and that creates also, as well a whole new set of data for counterparty risk management. So great progress on that front, but to borrow from uh, our CEO, Gottfried, uh, in cyber, only the paranoid survive. And uh, you need to be prepared for the worst. And the worst in cyber is that you, are, you or one of your counterparts is compromised. And that's the whole area of fraud detection and prevention. We're helping the industry on that front, of course, with new tools. The recent one, the Payments Control Service, which is essentially generating real-time alerts uh, as payments go through the SWIFT network. But there is a, this area, is a, there is a huge amount of innovation going on as well. Growing number of startups uh, around the, wo the world uh, for leveraging new technologies and coming up with solutions. Also here in London, it was being recently announced that uh, in June, uh, a new cyber innovation lab will be opened uh, at Olympic Park. So again, we'll be hearing uh, much more about it, uh, about many of these themes on cyber uh, uh, during the course of the day through expert sessions, CISO panels, and a customer security program uh, session at the SWIFT lab. So to wrap up, uh, you've seen it, the conversations today will center around, on the one hand, innovation, and on the other hand, uh, risk management, uh, as both are critical for success in the digital age. And uh, today, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be creating essentially a dialogue that will build into our global event, Cybos, later in the year in Sydney. And of course, as many of you know, uh, in 2019, for the first time ever, Cybos will take place here in London at the XL. Uh, so, uh, we, I mean, we would love to, to see you there uh, because I'm sure it's going to be one of the most impactful Cybos ever. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, the next few hours are going to provide us great food for thought. So I won't detain you any longer. Thank you, and have a great day.